Good evening. Oh, there we go. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for coming out for the SAG Foundation event with Short Term 12. Uh, as you can see, we've added some extra chairs here because we have some special guests. Um, I want to start by introducing an actor who was actually in the short film version of Short Term 12, um, Keith Stanfield. Thank you. Also joining us is the young actress who's pl who plays Jaden. She is also on screens now in a wonderful movie called The Spectacular Now. You should check out Caitlin Deaver. Uh, this actor stars as Nate in the film. You've seen him in things as varied as the Night at the Museum movies and The Master, Rami Malek. Uh, the actress who plays Grace in the film, you can actually see her on screen right now in this great movie called The Spectacular Now. Um, and of course, her other credits include 21 Jump Street and the upcoming Don John. Please welcome Brie Larson. Uh, the actor who plays Mason in the film, he has appeared in such films as Margaret and Jonah Hex, talk about range. He can of course be seen now on Aaron Sorkin's The Newsroom, and he is a Tony winner for Spring Awakening, John J. Gallagher. <laughs> we have to say nice things about you. He's trying. <laughs> He's trying to sneak in here, but he is the writer-director of the film. This is his second feature after the acclaimed I Am Not a Hipster. His screenplay for Short Term 12 won the prestigious Nichols Fellowship in 2010. And as you have just seen, it is now a feature film, which premiered at this year's South by Southwest Film Festival, where it won not only the Audience Award, but the Grand Jury Prize. Please welcome Dustin Daniel <laughs> We're out of time. No. Uh, <laughs> thank you all. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Um, because this is a SAG audience, I always like to start by asking the actors, how did you get your SAG card? Keith, you have a SAG card, right? What is this that? Is... <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't have one. I want one. Give me one. Uh, you, I think you do after this movie. You can borrow mine. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think it was from, I think it was from doing um, these skits on Jay Leno. Um, I used to do these fake uh, Barbie commercials and toy commercials, and I think I, I did I did over like a dozen of them. I think that that's how I. When you were how old? I was eight. I gotta look at my SAG card. Maybe it took me a little longer to get it in. Do you remember any of those? I think skits? I've been in SAG longer than I've been alive. You have to remember <laughs> one of those skits. Yeah. Oh, I remember a lot of them. Roadkill, Easy Bake Oven. <laughs> <laughs> The first one was Malibu Mudslide Barbie, which I was very excited about. I just got to dump a huge vat of mud on this dollhouse, and all these dolls went flying. <laughs> yeah, good times. It was my first time that there was like my name on a door. They had these like little cards that said Brie Larson, and it had a star on it. I have like 17 pictures of me like standing in front of it because I get so excited. I kept all of them. I put them all on my door at home. I was so excited about it. I don't still do that now. I'm over that. I feel it in my heart. I don't need to put it. I don't need to display it. John, what about you? Are we missing a mic? Yeah. They don't want me to say anything. <laughs> well, um, no, they know you're a theater guy. You can project. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, um, I'm pretty sure, I, I can't really remember for sure, but I'm pretty sure it was, a, it was a, a Hallmark Hall of Fame movie of the week called The Flamingo Rising, starring oh, William Hurt. No what I'm watching and tonight. Brian Ben Ben. What's it called? Flamingo Rising? The Flamingo Ride? Rising. 
Flamingo and, um, Rising. The Flamingo Rising. It was a, based on a true fly. story. It was, it, no, that it was based on a true story about a um, drive-in movie theater in Florida and the family that ran it in the 60s. And I played their friend, and William Hurt was in it. And there was one day where all I had to do was come out. I didn't have a lot to do in it. And I was about 16 years old, and I had to come out of a church and just walk past the camera. And I was so terrified and so nervous to do it. And I remember walking out and going past it, and, and William Hurt was waiting to like make his entrance, and he was standing over by where I walked off. And I walked over and I almost collapsed out of nerves from just walking. And I remember before he went on to do his scene, he just leaned over and he went, Perfection, John. <laughs> and then he walked off. Praise from Caesar. <laughs> Rami? Yeah. I knew a guy who used to sell uh, vouchers for a hundred bucks a pop. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. <laughs> um, I, I was going to say you could hook Keith up. Yeah, I could hook. Somebody <laughs> needs to hook him up. Uh, what was I do? I was begging a casting director to get in on an audition, and she's like, "Do you have an agent?" I said, "No," and she's like, "Are you in SAG?" I'm like, "No," and she finally let me in, and I got the job, and then I got, I guess, the Taft Hartley is what they call it. Ooh. Yeah, it's a great. It's great. It's a great day. <laughs> Do you yeah. remember the, what the project was you were Taft Hartley on? The Gilmore Girls. Ooh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Very high brass stuff. <laughs> um, I think that when I first got my SAG card, it was um, when I was 11. Oh and <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was four years ago. Um, I was 11, and it was an American Girl movie, you know, the American Girl oh, dolls. Yeah. I was the doll, and um, it was my first movie. Yeah, that's when I first got Which my doll were you? Uh, what? Which, Which doll were you? I played Gwen Thompson, a 11-year-old homeless girl. And, um, yeah. American there was a doll? homeless yes. girl? <laughs> yeah. I think I stopped with, wow. Yeah, I know. I can't imagine the homeless doll was very popular well, in stores. Well, she, <laughs> <laughs> she, yeah, she was. I think she was. Yeah. But you, buy, you, but you bought the doll new clothes, right? That's the whole point. Yeah, you take yeah. the homeless doll and then you get it. she gets, you know. You wash the old clothes. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> There's nothing wrong about this. Okay. All right. Yeah, I don't think that's teaching, <laughs> teaching kids the right way to go about Dealing with <laughs> the poor. <laughs> Just buy them. <laughs> so I want to talk about Short Term 12, obviously. And, and Destin, um, what compelled you to write about this situation? Um, I understand you actually have some experience in foster care. I, I worked at a place very similar to the, the place in, in the movie. It was my first job out of college. And um, I know it was just an in, incredible, incredibly challenging and moving and life-changing experience for me, and that that stuck with me all the way through film school. So I, I worked there for two years, and then went. On, I, I taught high school for one semester, and then went to film school after that. And it wasn't it wasn't until about three years after I had worked there that I think it had. It had set, that experience have, had settled in my brain enough to be able to organize it into a screenplay. Did you always know it was going to be a feature film? Because it was originally a short, wasn't it? Yeah, I didn't know. I, am I humming? Am I doing like the mm, a little head. echo? It's cool. <laughs> I don't mind it if you guys don't. I, um, I didn't think it was, I mean, at the time that I was having that experience, I wasn't thinking that it was anything. I, w I was really just trying to do the job as best I could um, and, and try to survive every work day. Um, while w when I did the, the short film, I wasn't thinking anything beyond trying to survive doing that short film and get it finished. I w it was my thesis project. And um, I, I didn't create it as a calling card or as a, as a, a you know, an example to turn into a feature. I just um, was really passionate about telling that story and tried to tell it as best I could. And then the, re the response to it was, was much, um, surprisingly much better than I 
expected. We ended up winning the, the jury prize at Sundance that year and then traveled around that year with the movie and I realized how universal these themes are and I, I, didn't, I didn't really anticipate that. Uh, how similar is the short film in terms of, I mean, do all these characters exist in that short? Uh, Keith, you were in the short film, were you not? I was. <laughs> playing, playing the same character? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, as far as I'm concerned, it's like a, an evolutionary form of the same character. I feel like he was more, um, like he had more of a backdrop, like he was actually more of a human being rather than just some mad, you know, just some random mad kid. So for me, it was a moving forward. Uh, other than that, um, there was actually a male who played Grace's part. Um, um, and uh, Yeah, I think, I mean, even when I think of Mar in the short, the, the, his name was Mark, and in the future it's Marcus, and that's a small change, but I, th I think the character just felt like a very different person. We, we, um, his hat was straight, and the short his hat was like tilted <laughs> to the side. <laughs> 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 that says a lot more than you may think. <laughs> so I want to ask the actors, how did the script find its way to you and, and what uh, attracted you to these roles? Um, I wanted to play Marcus, but <laughs> Keith already was cast. <laughs> um, I was emailed the script um, while we were shooting Spectacular Now. And I instantly felt like I, it was the greatest thing to have found its way into my inbox and um, instantly applied to a bunch of volunteer jobs in Georgia because I, I knew there wasn't much time and I really wanted to impress Dustin because I thought he would think I was underqualified and I wanted to show how passionate I was about it and um, we did a Skype call and I, I, I think it's funny looking back on it now because I really wanted to prove <laughs> and and it's funny through the process of the film I think the best part of the film is that I learned that I didn't have to that what I was doing and my essence of myself was enough um, but I really gave it my all over the Skype call and I think um, you know, I didn't tell him that I got rejected from the three volunteer jobs that I <laughs> that I applied for but I did apply and so at that point it was all kind of pending and by the end of it, um, I think, I feel like you told me by the end of the Skype call that I got the job. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, then he did. Were you familiar with Bree's work before meeting her on this call? Yeah. I, I, um, I watched everything that she had done. <laughs> and in, 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 in anticipation of that, of that call. And it was... I mean, for me, it was incredibly inspiring to watch, um, to watch her reel back to back, just and see all the different characters that she played. Even, even when she was just in something for a very small amount of time, she, she took the time to create a person. Um, and, and the other thing that was really impressive before even talking to her was seeing that whether she was doing comedy or or drama, she she felt like she was in the moment, and that it was w that she wasn't just telling jokes, and she wasn't just creating tears. She was she was a, a living person who was responding to things, and and if I mean the the easiest way to describe that is so many moments when I would watch a scene that she was in and say that that didn't nobody could have written that you know, that little thing that she did or that, you know, and, and those things were really exciting to me. I'm curious, was it a Skype audition? Did you read any of the scenes or did you just talk? I didn't read anything, which was the first time that I had ever gotten a job no. from not auditioning. Um, and it was also my first time being a lead in something. And so there, there was a lot of, you know, here we go, <laughs> you know? No pressure. Yeah, I, it, it was a... I had felt, I mean, I wanted to be, I told my mom that I knew what my dharma was and that I wanted to be an actor when I was six years old and I've always had this deep rooted thing that this was what I was supposed to do and you, you can't not imagine what it's like to carry something but it's hard to accept it, I think. Um, and then I, I, I think now when I look back on it that 
it took the right material, it took the right script for me to say, okay, I'm going to step up to the plate for this, and I'm going to fight for myself and for, and for this film because I, I believe in it, and I know what this is, and I want to I do it justice. John, what about for you? How did the script find its way to you? Um, I was at ho home in, in New York, and I had just spent several months going on about three meetings and two callbacks for an independent film, and I thought the script was really, really great, and I flew myself back and forth to L.A. to try and get it, and I didn't get the part. So I was like, oh, screw it. And, um, <laughs> and I just started eating whatever I wanted, and I, grew out this, <laughs> and I grew out this beard, and I grew my hair out, and I was like, well, I'm not going to get any more work this year. And, um, <laughs> and then I checked my email one day, and there was uh, the Read for Interest script, this movie called Short Term 12, and I read it, and I instantly forgot all about that other thing that I was beating myself up over not getting, because this was the best screenplay that I've ever been sent as an actor. And within three pages, um, I knew it was something that I, I, I would do anything. To, uh, to, to be involved. And on page two or something, when Mason shows up, it's like, it's like, Mason, he's a lovable teddy bear. And I was like, it's all happening for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> well, that answers my next question, which was if it was always Mason that you read for, because there's a lot of great roles in this movie. Yeah, I, uh, it was Mason, but then when he started speaking Spanish, I thought, oh no, there's been a mistake. <laughs> And then it gets revealed, obviously, why why yeah. he's uh, why he's or not not fluent because he doesn't. I don't. I didn't speak it very well, um, but I did my best. <laughs> but, well, thanks, thanks, Dustin. But yeah, no, it was it was always Mason was always the role that they wanted me to check out. So did you have to do a crash course in Spanish? I did a little bit, but but um, luckily only the only the lines that it, it was specifically certain lines that that Dustin had written that that were supposed to be in Spanish. But there were a couple of really good um, teachers on set. One of our producers, Asher Goldstein, actually uh, helped me out. He's very fluent, and um, uh, Kevin, who plays the Weiss, uh, um, actually he was helping me out, and his father too. So I had all these. You were very sassy I had, like, about these, it too. He'd be like, yeah, they oh, were like, they were like, no way, that is not right. Like he, like, he would, he would. Not not let me get get away with an inch. <laughs> so you've forgotten everything you've learned at this point. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was gone the minute they were like, "All right, on to the next scene." <laughs> uh, Rami, how about for you? Boom. Um, same like these two. I really responded to the to the script. I, it's like John said. You don't read something like that every day. Very very rare that something that good comes across. So. Uh, and I was saying we were, did a previous Q and A, and the the idea of working with someone who is, you know, a writer director as well, it, it, that's always something that kind of opens my eyes and makes me want to get on board because it's nice to know that some someone's going to be able to, you know, just just see their their vision realized, you know, and be on board with someone like that who has that type of perspective, you know, that's someone you can trust. And then we met and hung out, and I, I really enjoyed him, and I was like, I think he likes me. <laughs> it's like a date. Yeah, it was like a date. <laughs> but I just didn't have to sleep with him after. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> How did you know he could pull this off, though? I mean, did, did you see his first film? No, I didn't, but I've, anyone who writes like that and the way we, he was talking to me about the characters and and his vision for it, I just would go with my gut on a situation like that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Worked out this time. <laughs> and Caitlin, for you? Um, it, was, it was just a r regular audition. Um, only when I read the script, I, I immediately fell in love and was really inspired to do a good job in my audition, and I really worked hard on it. Um, the scenes that I had were really tough, the scenes that they picked for me to do in my audition. It was um, the freak out scene where I shove the cupcake in her face and freak out at everyone, um, where I read the story was one of my auditions, and then what was the other one? Um, I don't know, some re really tough scenes. And it was like one of the toughest auditions I've ever done. Um, but it was really challenging, and that's what I loved 
about the script that I was able to challenge myself. And um, it, was such, it was such an honor uh, to work with Dustin. And when I read the script, it was just truly, truly amazing. Um, and then right after I did the audition, I got a call back. And then I, I, I booked it like a day after or something. And I was so excited because I was, uh, I was just so, so excited to be able to do it because it was such a, an amazing character. And uh, yeah. Now, were you and Brie working on Spectacular Now together when you both got this script? Well, no. I, we didn't w do any scenes together in the Spectacular Now. Um, we had met a couple of times at a few, I think I met her like twice, like dinners with the cast and stuff. Um, and I was only in Georgia for about a week, but um, I'd only like met her a few times. But w when I found out that she was going to be in short term 12, I was really, really excited to be able to like become really close because we did become very, very close. And um, I f she felt like my older sister on set. So she gave me a lot of great advice. So I'm glad we got to bond in that sort of way, but yeah. You're glad you got to shove a cupcake in her face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <I'm glad. laughs> How many times did you have to do that scene? Uh, a l we did it a lot. Like, I mean, we didn't have to do it a lot, but <laughs> it's just, it's just <laughs> fun. <laughs> um, it was yeah, surpri surprisingly, I mean, there just because of the coverage, we had to do it quite a few times, and there were there was one one time when both uh, producers and some of the actors like came up to me and said, "I I don't think you should make Caitlin do this anymore because she's like she's getting exhausted and and it feels kind of mean." And mean to her. And, it was and, mean to her. And, and so, well, I'm just talking about that whole scene, yeah. that whole emotional scene. It was mean to scene. Rami's neck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. That's, another, that's another story after yeah, this. But, but then I, so I pulled, I, I got a little worried, and I pulled Caitlin aside and, and asked her if, if she's all right, like, doing this more, or we can stop. And she was just like, I, she, she actually looked at these guys, and she said, if they can keep going, I can keep going. <laughs> and, and so it, it kind of pumped everyone up, and we did it, like, Twenty more times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How many times did you get spit on? Well, well, that's the yeah, that's the thing. So um, <laughs> they were doing like maybe Bree or John's coverage first, and um, and it says in the script that I do spit on his face, and so like every single take from the start, I was spitting on his face, <laughs> and. I, I was I was like so into it I didn't even think about it until Destin came up to me he goes um hey Caitlin are you are you actually spitting on his face and I'm like yeah am I and he said we're not even on him Caitlin you don't need to do that and so I'm like we're not on either I felt <laughs> so bad I felt so bad I was like. I feel so gross. I just, I'm so sorry. I remember that. It's like the camera's not pointing this way. <laughs> We're good. Sorry. But I was like, maybe she just needs to get into it. Maybe she just, maybe she's getting revved up. Go for it. I didn't even think about it. So, Keith, I'm imagining that you didn't have to audition for your part in the feature film. Uh, at what point did Destin tell you that he was going to be making a feature? And you were coming back for it. Yeah, I had to audition for it because <laughs> he hadn't. We hadn't like he hadn't seen me in five years, really? and he was like, "Yeah, we gotta see where you're at with it." So um, I was stoked, man. Like I was just sitting around, and then all of a sudden, I check my email and see something. I'm like, "Hell yeah, you're doing a movie. Let's, <laughs> let's do this." And so, but I took it really seriously. Though. Like I really loved to do it. Like it was. I was stoked to, to have the opportunity, and for me, it was just an opportunity to do what I love doing, the only thing that I can do well, so I was like, hell That's yeah. That's not the only thing yeah, you can do. Oh, well, well, I can rap, too, <laughs> you, a little bit. You can't say that in front of a room of actors and then not follow up. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Ah! <laughs> you have a microphone. I do. I do. And we're all just going to sit here until... You do something. No. 
you can get the short term 12 soundtrack available. Are you on the soundtrack? <laughs> yes. Sometimes. Oh, that's yes. fantastic. And the credits. This is his, his song. Yeah, the, the credits was Keith, no, Keith no, rapping, and yeah. it's not all me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. That's um, actually, we co collaborated on the rap that you see in the film. Um, That's fantastic. Oh, look at that. <laughs> yeah. Now available. Um, Bree, you mentioned some of the research you did um, into playing this character. I'm wondering, did, did the rest of you do any specific research, or was, did you just let the character sort of develop on set? Uh, uh, Bree and I both got to go to. Uh, uh, on different days, and we worked with different people, but we got to go to a facility that's much like the one that's uh, that's portrayed in the film, and and uh, and shadow line staff members, people that actually do um, what our characters do. And so I I spent like five or six hours with with uh, with someone that actually does this for for a living, and it was really inspiring and really enlightening and and uh, really informative. And uh, I ended up uh, you know taking a lot of elements. A lot of really, really amazing uh, um, character traits from from the gentleman that I followed around, and and uh, what was amazing was that there was a lot about him that was already so much like the character that Destin had written, and and, and I don't think that Destin had ever ha had ever met this this guy, and so it felt very kind of fortuitous that so much of the stuff that Destin wrote about Mason I I found existed in this guy that actually was doing that, and so that was really helpful to be able to get a, a look at what. Uh, life really is like on the inside of uh, of these homes. I just looked at my friends. <laughs> no, no, actually I know a lot of people who have felt this type of neglect from not having like role models and things like that. Maybe not exactly cookie cutter, you know what I mean? But it was, it's it's a similar thing and, and we all understand this this feeling of um, of um, trying to overcome an in internal struggle. And so that's basically what I try to identify with and trying to express it the only way you know how because you can't say it so you know you you go to your art form and you try to express it um, through those mediums so I just kind of you know used things that I've been through in life to reflect and, and show have, it. Have your friends seen the movie? Uh, some of them yeah. 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 But what do they think? <laughs> uh, I don't know I would have to ask them. I never really asked them. <laughs> they didn't come up to you afterwards right away and tell you you were great? Oh, yeah, but they're my friends. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Um, I, I sort of, I didn't, well, before we started shooting, um, it was really helpful um, to get to meet the whole cast before, before we did start shooting. Um, I got to read with Bree. Um, which was really helpful. It sort of just gave me an idea of what I wanted to do. Um, but yeah, I sort of, I sort of try and develop the character before I start shooting. And also, I kind of like to get to know the people that I'm going to be working with because it makes everything more comfortable when it's on set. Um, I, you just kind of have to put yourself in the, put yourself in her position, and you just imagine how awful her life is right now and like her dad doesn't pick her up on her birthday I mean it's so sad and then she's going with through everything else and you just have to kind of put yourself in a in a different mindset I think and that's how I kind of developed Jaden um, but yeah <laughs> didn't you ask um, it was the day before we had we started well it was one day that we dedicated to it to doing, um, meeting everybody and rehearsing a little bit. But more importantly, we had somebody who had been working at a place like this for for much longer than I did and still works at a place like this come and, and everyone was able to ask questions, specific questions to him about their char character and and he was able to kind of relate to, um, to other kids that he knows and share stories with them. And so do you, I, th I remember you asking, telling him about Jaden. Yeah, yeah. I th that he was very helpful. <clears throat> there was a guy, actual foster care worker there who, um, it was really nice because the whole cast kind of sat down in a circle and just was listening to all these stories. And that's that's what was really, um, really, really helpful. Um, I, I think I asked him a few questions, but mainly what was just 
what was most helpful was just listening to what he was saying and listening to stories he has, you know, the stuff he's, that he's been through. And, um, and then he also taught me restraints and stuff, which was pretty cool, like how I would be restrained and how they would restrain me. Um, it was cool. Rami? Yeah, that was a great day of getting to know everyone and listening to him as well. But for me, I was trying to block it all out and not pay attention. So I'd go in there not knowing what to do. So we had, we had to do all those, you know, he's showing us the restraints. And I was like, I, do, I don't want to learn how to do this whatsoever. I think it'll be so interesting trying to like restrain a child and not know where to put your hands or what to do, you know, and just feel out of place. Um, I remember Destin was like, I don't want you going to any foster uh, home or group home. Um, but I just, you know, did my own work to prepare privately, I guess. <laughs> it sounds like, did you guys have a lot of rehearsal? I mean, I, mean, I don't know, can you reveal the budget and shooting schedule? Um, it was a 20-day shooting schedule, and we had one, we just had that one day of rehearsal and then so um, yeah all of our all of our other rehearsal was just happening as we were shooting yeah. and I, I think we dedicated I mean we dedicated most of that day not to rehearsing any specific scenes but to creating um, creating relationships I mean that that was the most important thing I, I think for all of us on this movie was to create a, a setting that just felt comfortable and as 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 free and safe as we could and and thank goodness everybody got along and we have such great wonderful personalities who who really helped help create that environment a lot of that has to do with your directing style like it just makes it it makes you feel comfortable like and at ease to express your like your own artistic creative thingies was there much room for improvisation, or did you have to stick pretty close to the script with 20 shooting days? Why are you looking at John? <laughs> John loves answering those questions. <laughs> no, I mean, I, there, there really wasn't not, I mean, not necessarily because when you have a script that's this perfect, you don't want to mess with it. And, and you know, Destin was, was loose with us and encouraged us to, to try different things. We never really had to. It was less about improvisation and more just about uh, keeping it kind of naturalistic and real and maybe on the fifth take saying something a little differently or trying a, a different wording or something. So, I was actually just looking at a behind the scenes footage of me talking to you and I couldn't even understand what I was, I wasn't <laughs> directing. I was looking just like, oh, you, uh, you, you were doing these things that you weren't, I don't think you were even aware of what you were doing. So just like, just whatever, just like, yeah, just go. Just, that was my direction for you. That was great. <laughs> really good. I took it and, and ran. <laughs> uh, I'm curious, what was it like to see this film that I know was, you know, a very personal experience for all of you? at the South by Southwest Film Festival with an audience, and then to win not only the audience award, but the grand jury prize. I mean, were you, were you all there at the festival? And the first time you got to see it with an audience, what was that experience like? Wild. <laughs> it, was, it, was, awesome. it was my first time seeing it at, at all. Like, when I first saw it at South by Southwest, it was my first time seeing it, and my first time seeing it with an audience. So it's really cool, because it was actually really cool, because. We were in the theater, and um, there was this guy sitting next to me, and he was totally laughing at one point. And then I look over again uh, 30 minutes later, and he's sitting there bawling his eyes out. And so that was, like, really, really awesome to see that because the film is, can make people cry and make people laugh. It's just so amazing. So that was pretty cool to see. I thought people were leaving the theater. I was so paranoid the whole time. I was convinced because there were people constantly coming and going and coming and going. I thought, oh my God, this is absolutely awful. I thought this was good and I realized now it's not. And I started kind of sinking down. Uh, I was like, oh God. And I had like my friend who came to the screen. I was like, why did I do this? This is so wrong. And then I realized that we were at the Alamo Draft House and it was waiters bringing people food. <laughs> And then I had the other weird realization of going like, is that person negotiating spaghetti right now? Like, really? Right now? It's so strange. 
Oh, they were eating no, the food woman while watching the movie. This eating. lady had a latte next I mean, to me. Maybe they're eating their feelings. I don't know. The woman next to me got like chilaquiles, and it was yeah. Like there was some weird thing. Eleven a.m. Like, very weird. extensive <laughs> menu. <laughs> Strange. I didn't even realize there were awards when we went to South by Southwest. <laughs> I was supposed to go for two nights for one of the screenings, and it, people started responding so amazingly to the film. It was so overwhelming, and. My schedule changed at work back in L.A., and, and our producer was like, hey, can you stay a couple extra days? And I was like, yeah, why? I like, well, I know there's these awards. So it's looking really good. And I was like, oh, okay. And, um, and then, you know, we went to that whole... I know there was a ceremony. I was like, this is like an awards ceremony. And then we won, and then I just couldn't stop crying. <laughs> there was a lot of crying. There was a lot of crying. How many times did you watch... John is a troop. Every single time that the movie played, John was there watching the entire thing. How many times did you watch I that? don't... This is, this is one of those annoying actor things to say, but it's like... It's, I don't like watching myself. It freaks me out. If I could break all the mirrors in my apartment and get away with it, I might just do that. But uh, this is one that I, I love watching it. I, I have not gotten tired of it. And I saw it at South by Southwest, and then there, were, there was two more screenings. And I went to one, and they didn't tell me that we were going just for the Q&A. And I got there, and I was like, so when, do, uh, when can I take my seat? And they were like, it's almost over. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was devastated that they weren't going to let me watch it again. <laughs> They're like, John Gallagher is a prima donna. <laughs> he wants to watch his movie over and over again. He loves himself so He much. is so vain. Well, it'll be in theaters in the next couple weeks, so you're welcome to come sit through some screenings. Totally. <laughs> You'll see me out there. <laughs> what is the uh, release date on this film? August 23rd, we'll be releasing in Los Angeles um, uh, at the Landmark on... The, what, on the Pico? Pico. Yes, yes, that okay. one, and and we we just found out that we're also playing at the ArcLight in Hollywood, right. which is pretty wow. pretty dream come true. The landmark doesn't get applause. West Side snobs. <laughs> it's just because it's so far. <laughs> it's, that's like it's a two great blocks theater. from where I live. Thank you. It is an <laughs> awesome theater. Well, again, congratulations on a beautiful movie. And everyone, please yeah. do go see it um, August 23rd. And uh, please spread the word because it's a really yes, special please. film. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for your time. Yeah.